welcome to the Wiki Tree Challenge. Hi, <laughs> I'm Mindy Silva, and I'm here with Janet of the One Place Study Society, Hi. and then with Azure, who runs uh, our One Place Study project on Wiki Tree. And, um, you know, it was really just an incredibly fun week. We were talking about it. It's we always find the most interesting things. It's so much fun, you know, to take a look at um, at what's there. And I'm going to go ahead first and talk just a little bit about Wikitree because we usually wind up with a few people that don't necessarily know who we are. And for those of you that don't know, our mission is to grow one accurate shared tree that connects us all and is accessible to all of us for free forever. It's all about collaboration. There's one profile per person. So if you and I share an ancestor, we work on them together. There is no your tree and my tree. And we just passed the 33 million profile. Um, You see what our current, there's our current number. <laughs> 33 profile uh, milestone with almost 11 million of those having DNA connections on them. So, you know, that's just really incredible um, that we have so many people that have joined the site. And also, you know, DNA has become such a, a trendy thing with genealogy and it does so much to help with the brick walls and, you know, those hard connections. And so it's great to see so many people are adding that. <clears throat> but what really makes Wikitree work is its community. It cornerstone of the community is our honor code. Anyone can view the profiles on Wikitree. It's free. But to edit anybody that isn't an immediate family member, you do need to sign the honor code. And that emphasizes sources, giving credit, having courtesy, understanding difficulties, um, accuracy, and respecting privacy. All of those things are really important to us. And that privacy is one of the things that makes Wikitree special. Even though we're growing a one world tree and we all collaborate, only close family members can collaborate on modern family profiles. So, you know, there's already going to be control set in place if you want to add your mother or your aunt um, that will protect their information so others can't see their specific details. But, you know, as you go further back, the privacies open up and more and more people can, can work on those. Um, so if you aren't a member yet, come and join, just takes a minute to register as a guest member and you can delete a guest account at any time. So now we're going to go to the challenge of the week. We, we partnered with a society of one place studies. They were started in 2013 and they've supported and educated people from all over the world that want to document a one place study. And it really just is an incredible way to, um, you know, to gather information. So they gave us seven names. We had seven days to find everybody we could find within seven degrees of them. And that means, uh, you know, anybody that's within seven steps of our starting person. So on Wikitree, we call that count a person CC7. And, you know, I'll give you some numbers here for the people that want math numbers. Rose Holton started with a CC7 of 118. So she had 118 relatives linked to her within seven degrees. And she ended up with a CC7 of 623. Charles Bullock started with six, and he wound up with 1,059. William Edward Manley started with 839. So he had some people connected. But by the time we got done with him, he was up to 1,379. Now, Sarah Monksfield only started with four, and she ended up with 558 people attached. Elspeth Smith started with five and ended with 696. Samuel Vick started with a CC4 of, se of four and CC7 of four and ended with 1,082. And George Wallace, who only had 34 people connected, now has 1,082 people connected. So, or sorry, 2,290 people. So Janet, would you like to tell us how you chose your starting people? Yes, thank you very much. So my name is Janet and I'm the current chair of the society and we aim to bring together the skills of local history and family history to find out as much as possible about any given place and the people who are in it. 
uh, and how they, they lived and interacted with the wide, wider world and wider events. So that's who we are. Uh, it's our 10th anniversary this year. And thank you for the invitation to be part of this, this project. That's great. So we emailed our members and explained who you were and what you were trying to do and uh, what, what the offer was. And we invited people to nominate a person from their one place studies and the replies were pulled out of a hat and these are the seven lucky people whose names were passed forward and it was as simple as that oh that's a great way to do it um you know it sounds like you were collaborating also though everybody working together to put something together here we have a few of our top people during the challenge week Stu ward who was our most valuable participant or mvp Rosalie Nev and Karen Lowe were our top bounty hunters. And I'm Kathy, the team captain for this week. You can earn bounty points three different ways and you get 10 points for them. One is by the first connection to the global pre. Another way is by breaking a brick wall for one of their ancestors that was chosen. The third way to get bounty is to find something interesting that is voted as a top discovery. But it takes an entire team to collaborate and come up with the amazing results that we do. We had more than 72 people participating in an incredible show of collaboration. So that's everybody that did some sort of work. And there's probably a few others that were on the, you know, in the background helping out with, with certain things that um, just didn't show up on the score sheet. So that's a lot of people, though. Everybody was interested in the one place studies. So we'll go on to Rose Holton. And Rose is the closest at 18 degrees or steps from George Wallace. Elspeth was 20 degrees from William Manley. And I'm returning to Rose as she's coincidentally related, this was awesome, to Edwin Boyd, who is a Canadian bank robber from our first challenge. So when I was, we love to look at these little, you know, relationships and it's so easy to do on Wikitree. And, you know, it's fun when you find something like that. And I, I'm looking at some of her connections and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, she's related to that guy. He was on the last, <laughs> he was on one of the other challenges we did. So that was, he was really an interesting man. Um, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, once again, we have a lot of fun using the connection finder. So we like to look and see who, which of us are the closest to the starting people, um, you know, which of us are closest to each other. And this is your captain's connection to George Wallace. So this takes you through the entire path uh, used to reach him. And there are a few connections by marriage. So not a biological relation, but, uh, you know, by marriage. And then here we have William Manley's connection to George Cayley, who was the sixth Baronet Cayley of Brompton. George's mother arranged for him to be educated by two nonconformist ministers. He uh, succeeded to the baroncy of the Cayleys of Brompton in 1792 when his father died. He was a fellow of the Royal Society, and he's best known for his pioneering work on aeronautics, working on flying machines, of different kinds, including gliders, um, you know, something akin to a helicopter that would lift people up and airships. And so, you know, where some of the other sites you can say, um, oh, I want to know if I'm related to the sixth Barrett, you know, Baronet of Brompton, we can say, oh, wait a minute, we want to know if William Manley's connected to him. And um, it just, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> So here's some more connections we're going to take a look at. Now, Samuel Vick is 17 degrees from James Polk, Polk, related by marriage. And let's see, I have the category for him. Throw that up there. And this is one of the things that you can do. So, you know, we can say, oh, I want to look at um, Samuel Vick's connection to all U.S. presidents. And it will go down and tell you how many steps away it is. So there's Harry Truman at 18 degrees, which really isn't that far. Abraham Lincoln at 18 degrees. And then if you click on the link, it will show you what that path is, just like mm -hmm. the other one that we looked at. Okay. And so, yeah, just one of our, our fun tools we do. <laughs> and... <coughs> 
Oh, I have another one. Since George, he seemed to be related to everybody. He probably wasn't, but it seemed like he was when we were doing these connections. Um, we're doing uh, George Wallace's connection to Scotland notables. And here again, here's an entire list of people that were really notable in Scotland history. And, you know, they, um, you can see the degrees, you can click on the paths if you want to, and you can see what the distance is. And so it's just so much fun. But now we're going to go ahead and look at a few more interesting people that our researchers found during the week. And Janet, it's so hard to pick these. It really is because we wind up with so much good stuff. And, you know, there's other things that are in the highlights post and I'll send you a link to that. Thank you. Um, you know, that we put in our forum. But these guys really are <clears throat> just amazing at, you know, going in and, and getting these interesting finds and digging out these details. And that's what we want to do. You know, we want to honor these ancestors and, and kind of bring them back to life for people. Now, Rose's brother-in-law, Thomas Casson, managed and owned a hotel in Manitoba called the Casson House. Around 1891, a fire burned the hotel and it had to be re built. So, you know, you can actually see pictures of this hotel. I couldn't get permission for one in time. I wish I would have. Um, but you can see pictures of it online. And, and you know, unfortunately, I think it was like right after poor Thomas started managing it, the fire happened. So <clears throat> not the best timing on his part. Yeah. And, you know, one of the one of the other things about Thomas is that he worked on the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway for almost 15 years. So, you know, that's a really long time okay. and hard work, railway work. And then um, to look at a coincidence or something similar, Rose's 18 degrees from James Alexander Lohe, QC, who's a notable person. And he also moved following the Canadian Pacific Railway. He was a successful lawyer. He invested heavily in real estate, owned many buildings, including the Grand Theater. And just an interesting little tidbit, both men had six children. So, um, yeah. Now, the next one we have is Charles Bullocks. And this was another good one. Brigadier General Alfred Douglas Miller, CBE DSO. I have to admit, I don't know what the initials are for. <laughs> <laughs> Is 25 degrees from Charles Bullock. And Alfred was actually the high sheriff of Oxfordshire while Charles was living there. So this is the person that was high sheriff in that oh, point in time. Yeah. yeah, it's and, the command of the British Empire and Distinguished Service Order. They're British gongs. Oh, okay. I'm glad you know. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. No, if we were working on the challenge still, I'd just reach out in Discord and go, okay, what does this mean? And like four people would probably tell me. So <laughs> I learned something new all the time. Absolutely. Now, he, Alfred, ultimately reached the rank of Brigadier General, and he was appointed the commander of the order in 1919. And Let's see if it'll open this path for me. I don't have it on the same screen. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And so that's the connection between Brigadier Alfred Miller and Charles Bullocks. And, you know, it's really fun. And you can click on any one of those along the way and bring up the profile of the person that is on that path um, in between them. And a slight nod here on those lines also. This was just kind of a funny one. To Miles Tolley, who is four, he's only four degrees from Charles Bullock. But in 1889, they took licensing their dogs like really seriously because they gave him a fine and seven days of labor, hard labor for not licensing his dog. I was like, oh man, how crazy is that, right? It's not like that, Nick. Yeah. And I know we did a, um, we did a challenge. I think it was our first year and we had a bunch of English people and we were having a hard time finding some of the records for them. And we actually were able to track them through the use of the dog records in that particular location. For some reason, they kept these extensive dog rush records <laughs> and, you know, they would tell you like how many dogs they had, all the details. 
but then they would also tell you, you know, owned by who, who lives on this street, who mm -hmm. is a baker or, you know, whatever his occupation was. It was crazy. Um, it was really a huge help. And I would have never in my life thought to look at, you know, records for dog licenses. Dog licenses. So we'll go on to William Manley, who was also born in England. And John Gregory was on his line. And this was actually William's um, uncle. And he was credited with saving several lives at sea as a watchman on the fish docks. And, you know, just a few minutes before he died, one of the men he had saved years and years before came to him and was actually there when he passed away. So, you know, here this man was that he had saved his life and um, he showed up and was there for him when he died. That was just really touching. Further out from William at 22 degrees is John Devere, KB. He was also from Essex. And in 1544, he served with the expedition to Boulogne, holding the rank of captain in the rear guard of the army of Henry VIII. Um, in Essex, where his estates lay, he held a number of posts of honor. He was appointed chief commissioner in 1545, joint Lord Lieutenant in 1550 and 1553, Justice of the Peace in 1554 and Lord Lieutenant 1557 through 1559. So, you know, here was somebody with a lot of titles yeah. and um, you just find that you never know who you're going to find when you get mm -hmm. way out there in the branches like that. Now, with Sarah Monksfield, we're going to look at a much closer connection. Here we had Rebecca Monksfield, which was Sarah's sister, and she was convicted of theft and transported to Van Diemen's Land for a seven-year sentence. And, you know, on the voyage, she became hysterical, and they actually wound up having to restrain the poor oh, woman. Poor girl. Yeah. So... It was just um, another thing where we were looking at connections and, and how the relations were. And it turns out that Sarah is 15 degrees from Dora May Tiedemann Wicks, which was of our last challenge, <laughs> and 20 degrees from Jesse May Hill from that same challenge. And, you know, if you don't know, Jesse May Hill is, uh, is known for doing a huge amount of research, years and years of research on all of these convicted women that were sent to Australia. And she collected huge amounts of data that's now held by the um, Australian Society Genealogist Archive Collection. And so, um, you know, just really interesting. And we learned a lot on that one, too, you know, just mm. about these these poor people that had been sent over for a lot of times small sentences, uh, you know, to serve out these seven years in this foreign land where it wasn't built up. And, you know, ironically, I did look because um, I was wondering what she got sent for. You know, I, I was expecting it in the Australian challenge, but not necessarily with this challenge. And she stole shoes. So she stole 17 pairs of shoes. And she went around and she was selling them to the different pawnbrokers. And she would say, oh, my husband makes shoes. Here's this two pairs of shoes. And she'd sell it to one and then she'd move on to the next shop. Yeah. So, you know, then, of course, they go back and they re-interview all these these pawnbrokers. And, you know, I'm sure she didn't think 17 pairs of shoes was worth that. You know, but we did also find during the time that we were doing that, that type of research, I mean, some of those people were just, they weren't doing stuff like that, but they were maybe stealing a little bit, you know, enough to put some bread on the table for their kids that night mm -hmm. or, you know. Just enough for dinner, not like out robbing a bank or something you would think is serious. And they would send them for those seven year sentences. It was just incredible. Mm -hmm. Now we have on Elspeth's lines, four degrees from her through her oldest son, who was illegitimate, Alexander Moir. He died from wounds sustained in action while serving with the Gordon Highlanders during World War I. Elspeth's 20 degrees from Lance Corporate Percy Kenneth Hunt, also of the Gordon Highlanders, who died in service in 1915. 
and was awarded the British War Medal and the Victory Medal. And then she's also 33 degrees from Alexander William Menzies. Now, he was a Lance Corporal of the Gordon Highlanders, and he also mm -hmm. died in service 1916. So, mm -hmm. you know, here, if you're looking at it, and even where you have those swaps with, you know, marriages and whatnot, I mean, you think about your own life where you have aunts, uncles, cousins, their wives, their son-in-law. You know what I mean? Not everybody's mm. a blood relative, but they're all family and they kind yeah. of, um, uh, yeah, affect how you interact with the world out there. So, so we find all connections fascinating. Mm -hmm. Three from the same war and the same regiment. Yeah, within a year. Mm. They all, they all died in the service within a year of each other. Hard times. So here was another. This was just kind of a fun, interesting fact. Now, we had William Topp, who's six degrees from Elspeth Smith. He had eight sons before the birth of his only daughter. And then Barbara Topp, who's eight degrees from Elspeth, and her husband had eight daughters before the birth of their only son. And their first cousins, it's not even like they were siblings, mm. but their first cousins. And, you know, what are the chances? I mean, seriously. Yeah. We have Samuel Vick next. And he had quite a few interesting people in his branches. And you can see some of them in the highlights post in our forum. Helen Madeline Cook Jones was the wife of Samuel's nephew, Samuel Henry Jones. She was an American actor and civil rights activist. Helen was active in the Unitarian Fellowship for Social Justice in the 50s. Um, she moved to Philadelphia and got mm -hmm. involved with the Quakers and their civil rights activism. And she earned a master's degree from San Francisco State University. Now, she continued on as an activist, especially supporting the Japantown neighbors um, who were battling redevelopment and gentrification. She frequently spoke about cuts to arts education and, um, you know, spoke at school board meetings. So that was just kind of really cool. Okay. This was, yeah, this one was kind of a twist. It was interesting. So we have Macon Moore Berryman, who's three degrees from Samuel Vick, was a social worker. He was the commissioner of the Department of Social Welfare for the United States and Virgin Islands for more than 15 years. Now, it also involved with the Boy Scouts. And in mm -hmm. 1972, he was awarded the Silver Antelope Award by the Boy Scouts of America. 19 degrees from Samuel is John Fitzgerald Kennedy, of course, there, 35th president of the United States. And <laughs> it turns out he was the first president who had been a Boy Scout. <laughs> So oh, how cool is that? Right? Here we have two Boy Scouts. And then we're going to go ahead and look at a few unique ones. These were military men. Kathy, I had to read your part. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I wish I could let you see my, my text right now. This is John Powell Shine, who was seven degrees from George Wallace. And this was really cool. He was a Royal Navy person and notable for being part of the expeditions to find Franklin's ship, which was lost in the search mm. for the Northwest Passage. But he also devised a plan to reach the North Pole by balloon. And then also off of George Wallace's branches by 19 degrees is Clay Rex Cottrell, now, he was a member of the 39th Balloon Company in 1918, and those consisted of one captain, three first lieutenants, four second lieutenants, 174 enlisted men, and a balloon. So, there, <laughs> right? There I learned something. <coughs> Excuse me, I got this itch tonight. How, why does it take like 185 men to, <laughs> to man a balloon? <laughs> it seems a lot. Yeah. And then here were a few more um, fun ones or interesting mm -hmm. ones. So uh, these are going to be military, though. And, you know, some of these, I always like to give a nod to them. We always appreciate the service and what our ancestors have done Absolutely. for us. 
you know, whether you believe in war or not, um, you know, they, they stood up for something they believed in. So we have Samuel Vick's son, Daniel Vick, served as a private in the Students Army Training Corps at the Negro Agricultural and Technical College in Greensboro, North Carolina. The U.S. War Department created the Student Army Training Corps, the SOTSI, as a way to hasten the training for the students of war. And um, he was spared overseas combat, but he did learn do these college courses while he was training for the military. Now, four degrees, we talked about Alexander Moore, who died from his wounds. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones um, I thought I stayed within the Great War. Yeah, I did. World War I. Mm -hmm. But we also have seven degrees from Elspeth is... James Top, and he was a donkey man serving in the SS Treville when he drowned as a result of an attack by an enemy submarine. So, you know, he was 48 years old. We had Cecil Herbert Cox, who served with the British Army in World War I, and he died of his wounds. He was only 23 years old. Then there's William Gillingham Howard, who served with the 14th Battalion of the London Scottish uh, Regiment, mm -hmm. died of his wounds, and he was actually in France at that time, and age 24. That was on the Manly Line. We have Thomas William Bones, who served as a stoker in World War I and received the Victory Star Medal and the General Service Medal. We had... Uh, four degrees from Charles Bullock, Sidney Tully, who served as an air mechanic first class with the Britain's Royal Navy, and he survived the war. Yeah. And four degrees from Charles was Harold Thomas Tully, who served in the British Army, 6th Corps Troops, 101st Brigade, Ammunition Column. So, you know, there, there's a few of them that made it through that war, but it's always sad to see um, how many, you know, we lose. Now, on WikiTree, we're all cousins by blood or marriage. So, you know, once again, right now we have 28,673,312 cousins connected on WikiTree, uh, alive or not. That's a lot to be connected. Yeah. I know, and it's only a drop in a bucket, right, for mm -hmm. what the rest of the world is. So we started out with just four countries to research in. And Kathy, do you want to go ahead and tell us where we wound up? Kathy? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I asked if you oh, wanted to countries. tell us what the countries we wound up in, honey. <laughs> Um, we started out with a few, and as you can see, we were ended up in quite a few. Yeah. Um, Canada, England, Scotland, United States, Angola, Australia, mm. the British West Indies, Puerto Rico, Portugal, Germany, Haiti, France, Jersey, and Japan. Wow. The it's one amazing. That, Go on. The one that kind of surprised me the most was actually Japan. Yeah. Go me on. too. Just because I can see with, you know, England and Scotland in there, you know, going to Canada, the U.S., mm. and Australia, but Japan. <laughs> yeah, and the ones that were transported, you know, you know they had no choice to be in Australia. They yeah. yeah. There. <laughs> Portugal and Angola was interesting as well. Um, yeah, I get excited when we find Portugal. That's one of my areas of expertise. So um, it's actually very rare during the challenge that we wander into, <laughs> want, yeah. accidentally wander into Portugal. But every once in a while, we get somebody that goes through there. Um, was it the same yeah. person in Portugal and Angola? Was it the same person with links in those two? Do you know offhand? Um, I'm not sure about that. I don't remember who yeah, the yeah, Angola yeah. one was. But we did have yeah. the one couple that was, was a missionary. And yep. they travel to a whole bunch of countries, yeah. like a whole list. Yeah, they was the same family. Yeah. Portuguese speaking, of course. Yeah. They started out in British West Indies. Uh, the, the, that's where the parents were born. And then they were missionaries and, and were sent to Angola. And then some of their kids became missionaries in 
in went to Portugal and so it's just really very interesting family. Yeah, they were incredibly well traveled. That's amazing where people end up, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, where did the, Azure? Do you remember where the Japan came from, though? Oh was no, that not also. No, um, I thought see. that was somebody else that was in Japan. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't say anything in the interesting finds or anything about Japan. Once again, there's just so many, um, you know, good ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you wind up looking at all of these, um, you know, all of these names and locations and pretty soon we get to the end of the week, you know, and the team will have done like 15,000 edits to the different <laughs> profiles and, you know, we'll have 8,000 new people on the tree and, and yeah, pretty soon after a while, you're like, where was that one that went here? I yeah. <laughs> where was I? Who's that guy? You know, the guy with the thing that went to Japan. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. <him. laughs> yeah, so you need a rock solid filing system. And then Azure, do you want to go ahead and tell us uh, some about the One Place Studies project, but also how you, um, you know, work with the challenge this week? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we only had actually one of the ancestor profiles that was a uh, part of an existing uh, study on Wikitree, where it was uh, created on Wikitree already. And that was the Port of Hull, uh, Society Sailors Orphan Home. And when it started out, I think there were about, um, I think there were about 70 profiles that were in that category. And now there's uh, almost 200, 193 yeah. profiles in that category. Wow, and okay. I, I can actually share my screen and just show you where we're at. You, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Share this real quick. So I'm just going to upsize the screen here. There we go. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we had, here they are, here's the list. And so <clears throat> here are just basically the the ancestor and then the sticker, what that sticker looks like on the ancestor mm -hmm. profile. And then the, this is how many profiles are register you know in the category for the that study so the largest one of course was the uh, samuel vick one place study in wilson north carolina uh, we had a, we had quite a few uh, people from the u.s black heritage project that were taking part in the challenge for the week and so there were quite a few uh, profiles added for those lines and we got the they got added to that category, but they all, all these studies got created and added to. So we had a lot of fun. And yeah. now this, for the next week's challenge, people are asking for studies to be created. So it's really exciting to, you know, it, it's been uh, a really good showcase for creating interest in one place studies. Excellent. Good. I hope it encourages people to dive in and, and do their own studies on their own places of interest, whether it's where you live or where your ancestors are from or just anywhere that grabs your fancy, really. Yeah, I hope so. And look yeah, at who get... has two place studies. <laughs> yeah, George, because, because George, uh, you know, he started out in, in Scotland and he ended up in Ontario. We wanted to to cover both of those places. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we know, we know there's such a great genealogical tool, but, you know, it was really fun to have the focus on this because, like Azure said, now this time people are already getting in the habit of it, and they're like, oh, wait, but I have a church, or would this yeah. location be a good one-place study? And Azure's like, yeah, let me set it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> it could be anywhere you want it to be, and we find there's a lot of people do places they have a connection to, 
um, yeah. that cemeteries or war memorials or a school or a place of work or, um, you know, that just something that, piques, you know, piques your interest to really sparks your fancy. Um, yeah. Some people have done ships, for example, and who served on particular ships. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, it doesn't have to be a town or a village. It, it, it can be an institution or a, a memorial or something like that. Yeah, they're really great. Yeah. So this just kind of gives you an idea of where people traveled. You know, the the birth is the, the yeah. red dots and the blue is the death. And so the migration happened around the, for this study. Kind of fun to see. Yeah, it gets around a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you're, we're studying, you know, one place in particular, people come in and people go out and people have relatives yeah. in all over places. So it, it, it kind of spreads. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good to see where it ends up. Yeah, they've got Yeah, and it bit. really is helpful, you know, when you wind up with, as, you know, part of your family that was in one location for a long, a long time, especially, you know, because I know I'm researching and I'll get bad and I'm like, okay, I got to put my blinders on because I'll face this by me. I'm like, wait, but I, I have that surname over here. But, you know, if you just go ahead and put them all in the same town and you study them in a one place study. Um, you're, it's going to be easier to find those other people. You're like, oh, let me get that other guy that lived in, you know, Tiverton. And, yeah. you know, you can just pull your, your space page up or your category up and you can find that person. So I'm um, an incredibly helpful tool. Yes. And a lot of people who've started been researching their own family and then realize that they've got so many in one particular place and that the only way to sort them out is to research everybody in that place and see how they're all linked. Yeah. Yes, it's exactly. it helped break down brick walls that way too. Yeah. And then, Azra, right. you want to tell, tell us a little bit about what you're showing now? Yeah, so I was just going to show you the different uh, one-place study categories Kind of so you can see the grouping of um, all the profiles that are in the study. So these are all the ancestors that have the sticker or the category uh, attached on their profile. And so, of course, from any category page, you can click on that Wikitree Plus Maps and get that map page that I showed. And then also you can click on the My Connections and see what your connections if you're connected to the tree, you can see what your connections are to the people right. in that place. Or you can put in a wiki tree ID of somebody and have it show you. And see them that but, way. Yeah, so I was just showing kind of an idea of what that looks like for the different the different studies. Um, we went through and, and added the category to them. Mm -hmm. And I have it. I have pictures, you know, attached, so it kind of helps you see what you can do with a, a study on the tree. So lots, lots of options. <laughs> Thank you. There's plenty to explore in there. Yeah. <laughs> it gives, uh, even if it's not your place or my place, it gives ideas for uh, our own studies that we can adapt and, yep. and incorporate. That's great. So, Janet, what do you, um, what kind of tips do you have for the genealogist that's new to creating a one place study? <laughs> okay, so I think the first one is to pick a place that that holds your interest, um, because you you end up doing an awful lot of work on it. But to some extent, it's like Harry Potter: the one chooses the wizard, and you find you're doing it, and then realize, oh, that's what I've been doing all this time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh -huh. I think in many ways the tips are similar. Get organized. Um, try and set some idea of your boundaries and your goals. So how are you defining your place? Are you going to do a big place in uh, concentrating on a particular aspect? So like one person will do a large town, but on records from before the start of civil registration and the census. So basically pre-1800 records. Or are you going to do a small place, just a house, and find out everything you possibly can about it? Um, are you going to time limit it? Are you going to limit it to a certain kind of record or a certain kind of event? Um, I think another is research widely. 
So as well as the standard sources for genealogy, family history, um, look at the tools that some of the people who do population studies use or uh, some of the things for physical or landscape or industrial history because that affects how your place developed and why people moved in or out, where money came from or where they stopped making money. But the main, I mean, there's only two main rules, which one is which to research with integrity, like you have your code of honour, and the second is to have fun. It's your study, it's a hobby, enjoy doing it, go where it leads you. Um, it's not, there's nothing in or nothing out. If it's relevant to your place and you enjoy researching it, then fine. But being loose does mean we do have to have a degree of discipline because uh, it's very easy to follow rabbit holes. And <laughs> like you were saying, Mindy, realise you're researching something very interesting, but a long way away from where you started. And you think, how did I get here and how am I going to get back? Um, those, those would be the main ones. Um, there is, I mean, we have a website, obviously, there's advice on there on getting started. And a plug for a book, which I didn't write, so I can plug it, is one of our previous chairs called uh, Janet Fu, Dr. Fu, has written a 10 steps to a one place study that is readily available. Um, and that is a very good brief introduction on, on how to start, how to get organized and how to structure a study that you can adapt whatever your study is anywhere in the world, really. So yeah, I would uh, highly recommend that if you're interested in starting one and going on a, a step further with it. Yeah, all really great advice. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and come and join us. We're a friendly bunch. Oh yeah. You, you just gave me some ideas of what I can do for my <laughs> one place study. That <laughs> Excellent. My husband <laughs> i'm blaming my husband for it um on the way to pick up my daughter where she lives we pass a air museum mm -hmm. and so it's a building and they have the airplanes there that are you know were used and no longer used and i'm there and all of a sudden my brain starts going and going one place study, one place yeah. study, one place study. Oh, wow. So I'm like, Asher, I need a one place study. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, who so built them? Who designed them? Who flew up, them? And she set it up. So I took I took some pictures of, of what I could. And by doing the, the tips and kind of the ideas of goals and stuff, now I'm like, oh, now I should look at what kind of planes and helicopters and maybe yeah. do a little blurb on like each one and maybe find out who flew it. Yeah. Oh, there's so, so. many aspects to that, isn't there? Yeah. Why do we yeah. Who designed them? Who built them? Who flew them? Why? Where? Who owns and them now? How did they come to be where they are? Who built the building? And Yeah. Yeah, my mind just started going. I was <laughs> like, ooh. Who set up the museum? Where did the money come from? Yeah. Yeah, you know, so. yeah that, that can That could be a never ending. Things. Yeah, I think that one would spider <laughs> out a lot. It would sprout little baby one place studies. <laughs> I, I warn you, though, it can become crazily addictive. You know, oh, it is. It can be a massive time and money sink. If you, you can do it for free, you can do it cheaply, but it can be a massive time and money sink if you want it to be. Yeah. 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 But you know, you, you, you can do it either with free online material or what you can get from the standard subscriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Wikitree with the, the enormous contribution there because there's so much available and the connections and the links. I think are the, one of the great strengths of Wikitree that you can come up with links and connections that you wouldn't have dreamt of otherwise. And you think, all oh, right, okay, so they fit in, or so that's how they fit in. Uh -huh. yeah. And I think you know, that's one of the, uh, the big advantages of, uh, of, of Wikitree as a project. It just shows how everything's linked. You said yeah, that in about some very talented and some very generous researchers and uh, having collaboration yes. at the heart of it, I think is absolutely great. 
Yeah, we yeah, do. We have that. a really incredible community. Oh, you know, geez. there's just so many people out there that are helpful. And, you know, some people don't realize that we have everything up to professional genealogists or, you know, other professions, um, doctors, lawyers, other things. And they're in here volunteering their time to help people or to advance these mm -hmm. projects and, you know, to help us connect the world out there. So um, really, really friendly, though, really friendly, yeah. nice uh, community. And Kathy, that's a good segue into the collaboration for the week. So how do you feel that the collaboration went during your challenge week? It went awesome. And I do have to say I did like a little mini challenge inside the challenge because I saw that there were two to three of the profiles that didn't have as many um additions new profiles made for for them so i'm like um okay this line and this line and this line there can we get it up to 300 new profiles for these people you know can we do it because some of these other ones were like over there yeah. the vic the vic line was way out there i was <laughs> waiting to see if it would get yeah. to a thousand it, profiles. It was crazy um and the collaboration is just there. People were like, oh, where do you need me? And, I'm say, and I would say like, oh, this line could use some profiles made and people would jump on. And I know that like Azure would do some and if she couldn't finish something, she would put it in Discord um, and somebody else would come along and they'd pick it up and they'd start adding profiles on it. So all seven starting profiles that we were given all had at least 300 profiles mm -hmm. added on yeah. there. And that's incredible, you know. It's... And it it just, it blows me away the collaboration on people. Mm -hmm. um, I, George Wallace is my nemesis and he always <laughs> will be. <laughs> <laughs> for, but for everybody's his, related to George. <laughs> for, for his parents, um, yeah. I had somebody from the Scotland Project helping me kind of a little bit behind the scenes ahead of time. So I was learning how to research in Scotland um, and just people kind of jumping in and trying to explain to people, you can't just take something at its um, face word value. or what it looks yeah. like. You have to investigate it and do research just because the time may be right doesn't necessarily mean the place is right or yeah, it could be off a little bit place name. You have to look at the boundaries because towns don't change but boundaries oh, do absolutely. so you yes. need to be careful and so george wallace was very learned quite a bit on on that one so he was my main focus but i kept an eye on everyone and there was no shortage of people jumping in saying what can i do who needs help with what um azure would get on and say oh where can I work? And then for the Vic line, the U.S. Black Heritage, they just would go with it and they would just go back and forth. You know, who needs this? Who needs this? And one of the people would just, she was just going crazy with making the cemetery categories. Yeah. I think she made like 15 of them during the week by the time she fit, she finished. <laughs> But it's like, if anyone needs one, let me know. I'll go ahead. And <laughs> and yeah, and our chat ready. goes, our chat yeah. for the challenge goes around the clock. It's, we, yeah. are, we are definitely global. So 24-7, yeah. that chat goes until the challenge weekends. It's almost well, continuous. And then, and then yeah. people are still working on those profiles. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Even after the challenge weekend, people are still adding people. So, Yeah. You say George Wallace is your nemesis, but I bet he's got under your skin now. Oh, yes. <laughs> You'll never keep coming him. across him now. Nope. You'll never I, forget him. It's going to, I think. We went back and forth and back and forth on him. And finally, I told Kathy, I said, you know what? 
And I said, just hang on to it and let's just let the group attack it. And that's exactly <laughs> what she did. So she stopped working on it. And, you know, when the challenge week started, she was like, okay, you guys get together and fix this and go. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? I was back to working on them. <laughs> but there was like, I think there was at one time five of us working on him for a couple of days there. So. But it it was, and that's what I love about the collaboration on yeah. these challenges. Um, if you don't know an area and somebody does, it kind of, those people kind of team up yeah. together. Um, you can have a newbie that, you know, kind of not sure about something and you kind of lead them gently, you know, which I've, I've done. Um but people have done that for me. So I'm paying it. Yeah. Pay it forward. I pay it forward. Yeah. And I think that's what WikiTree is all about is we learn from everybody. And the collaboration between the sort of family, local, one place studies oh, yeah. communities is superb. And we find, you know, from the society that somebody will come across something and send you an email and say, I think this is your place. Is this one of yours? Say, oh, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. And you find one that goes for somebody else and you pass it on that way. Yeah, I, and I once you get used to that kind of an environment, you know, it's hard to, to not do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the first, when we first started the challenge, we ran it every week. And this year, we're only doing it every other week. But you find yourself, you know, getting in a sticky spot in your own research. And, it, you know, ha out mm -hmm. of habit, you want to jump in Discord and go, okay, everybody, <laughs> look at this census record. And they're, like, oh, they're not there. It's awfully. Who's going to look at my record? <laughs> Somebody but, somewhere will know. Yeah. What, Azure, wasn't it today somebody was asking you about setting up a one place study for the challenge that's going on right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, actually two two new ones today. Yeah. 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 But four all together so far for the new for this new challenge. Four new studies. Three new members of the project. So yeah. So Good stuff. You're welcome. Janet, thank you. <laughs> and thank for you to you. us collaborate. Oh, a pleasure. Thank you very much. And to all your wonderful volunteers and the hours that they've put in. I hope they've had loads of fun. Um, and I'm sure that the uh, certainly the seven whose names came out of the hat will be uh, delighted with what uh, what you've what they've managed to come up with. So thank them very, very much. Um, yeah, it's been great working together. Yeah, definitely our pleasure. And I guess this will be a good time to um, start wrapping things up. And if anybody has questions about the presentation or WikiTree in general, you can go to wikitree.com and ask. Or about the One Place Studies. Uh, there's, you know, plenty of people. We'll just all point you at Azure. She'll get you going. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, you know, while the credits uh, play for attributions, I'd like to take a minute just to thank, again, all the wonderful WikiTreeers that helped with the research for this challenge week. So, you know, we had more than 74 people working um, for an entire week, and they just found an amazing amount of discoveries. And they were a fun group to work with. So, um, you know, it's just, it, it's always memorable. And I always learn something from somebody else's methods. And I'd also like to congratulate and thank Kathy Nava for leading such a successful week as a captain. Um, great yes, job, thank Kathy. You. And we'll go ahead and wrap this up. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, Janet. And I'll send you some of the links to the pages so you can find the rest of the goodies. And <laughs> you. you know, really, really appreciate your time here and joining us and also letting us work with you. It's been a true pleasure. Thank you. For